In this video we will talk about the differences between a nucleophile and a base. So to begin, we have to go back into acid-base chemistry definitions. And so we can start off by talking about the Lewis definition, which states that an acid is a electron pair acceptor, while a base is a electron pair donor. Now if we move over into the Bronsted-Lowry definition, an acid is a proton donor, while a base is a proton acceptor. So, so let's move forward and continue talking about the Lewis base because this is where things get to be a little bit muddled and, and fuzzy. So, so the Lewis base has two different components to it and, and they each describe different things. So, so one of them describes that if you have a molecule, for example, that donates a pair of electrons to a hydrogen, well, if you have that, that instance, you can keep things the same and, and you can still continue to call it a Lewis base that you are working with. Now, if you have a molecule that donates a pair of electrons to an atom other than hydrogen, well, now you have to refer to it as something different, and, and that something different is going to be called a nucleophile. So, so I mean, we can, we can keep things there, and we can say, okay, that's it. That's the difference between a, uh, a nucleophile and a base. But, but I think that leaves a lot to be desired, because um, if you haven't noticed this already, a lot of people refer to a Brownstead base and they, inter they use it interchangeably with the Lewis base. And, and you know, that's okay if they do that because, I mean, they're, they're, they're kind of the same thing. And, and what I'm going to show right here is that they just refer it to a base at a certain point. They don't necessarily specify what type of base they're working with. In other words, they're not saying, you know, we're working with a Brownstead base or, you know, or, or they, they won't say, okay, we're working with a Lewis base. And, and, and they're okay in doing so because, they, they can use each one interchangeably, as I've mentioned earlier. Now, now let's just demonstrate an example as to as to why um, you know a person would be safe in saying that you know they're working with a, a, just a base in general, and it's not necessarily a Lewis base or a Bronsted base. They're just working with the base because either one is going to be applicable to to uh, a chemical reaction. So, for example, if I have a, we'll just use a uh, a water molecule interacting with say a hydronium ion and I can show some equilibrium arrows here to indicate that we are moving in a forward and reverse reaction but basically what's going to happen is now if I show arrow pushing I can show that a pair of electrons moves over to a hydrogen and knocks the hydrogen off and then from there if I show the products I will demonstrate that our water molecule will now become a hydronium ion and our our previous hydronium ion will now become water and by the way let me just uh, let me just demonstrate that this is going to be a Bronsted base, and this would be the conjugate acid of that. So, so you can see that I'd be safe in calling this a uh, a Bronsted base, and let me just write that here. And and that's going to make sense because a Bronsted base. Um, you know, it, it accepts a proton, and, and that's what would happen here. This water accepted a proton, and that was demonstrated on the other side of the chemical reaction where now we show a hydronium ion. Well, in addition to that, I'd also be safe in calling it a Lewis base. Because as you can see, I have donated a pair of electrons to a hydrogen atom. And so, so that is how and why either either definition will work in terms of explaining you know our chemical reaction so so with that being said I mean I, I, I want to mention that even though I, I said it's okay that you know we can refer to it as just a simple base well well there are some differences and I, I want to want to point those out here and and I think the best way to describe those differences is to show them on a Gibbs free energy diagram so if I demonstrate that energetically by showing G represented on my y-axis which represents energy 
and then my x-axis is going to represent reaction progress moving in this direction and and I can just show a spontaneous reaction here I mean I could make it non-spontaneous as well it really doesn't matter but but I'll just show a spontaneous reaction and a spontaneous reaction implies that you do not require an energy input for the reaction to occur it, it also implies too that you start off at a higher energy level and you end up at a lower energy level and by the way these are going to be my products and over here are going to be my reactants this on top is going to represent my transition state I can also just call that TS for transition state or it can also be known as a delta G double dagger as well so so now let's uh, go back into our definitions and let's talk about the uh, uh, the Lewis space so if we are going to talk about the Lewis space and we want to differentiate between the Brownstead base we are going to say that the Lewis base represents kinetics and the Brownstead base represents thermodynamics so so what do I mean by that and, and how do I translate that over into this Gibbs free energy diagram well if we start off with the Lewis base and kinetics remember that kinetics are referring to reaction rates and and how fast a reaction can take place well in order to do that we have to look at the activation energy barrier or hill that this energy has to climb in order for the reaction to take place so so this would be one example of that now if I wanted to speed things up I would just show a lower activation energy barrier because that would imply that now we have a faster reaction taking place and to show to show further emphasis on it I would just show or demonstrate a another activation energy barrier that's lower than than the other two and and that's going to be the fastest relative to to these two here on top now now with that being said the lowest energy or the lowest activation energy barrier that is going to be the strongest Lewis base and I'll just put this right here so as you can see if we if we move down we're going to have the uh, the strongest base and, and I, I suppose I can just write that here in another color so now that you now that you see that well that's going to be our Lewis base and, and keep in mind too a Lewis base as I've mentioned earlier has two different components to it one of which it just stays a Lewis base if we're working or if we're donating a pair of electrons to a hydrogen and then we have another example where if we're donating a pair of electrons to say carbon or an atom other than hydrogen well now we're, we're saying that we're working with a nucleophile so so these kinetics are going to be applicable to the Lewis base under under both circumstances by using uh, you know both components now if we are referring to thermodynamics now and we're looking at the Brownstead base well now we're looking at what's going on over here and and we can demonstrate that by showing a continuation from this delta G double dagger or transition state by moving forward now for example I can show this right here where I end up with um, we'll just show it right there and then we can do this one and this is where you know our products come to a halt but basically what I'm demonstrating here is in a, a basis affinity or a Brownstead basis affinity for a hydrogen so as we move up well now we are working with a stronger our strongest in this case Brownstead base implying that that at this energy level our affinity our base's affinity for a hydrogen or a proton is going to be a lot higher than than you know this one or this one and and that is that's pretty much how we determine the the strength of a of a Brownstead base relative to the strength of a of a Lewis base now keep in mind just for further emphasis if I were to I suppose I can keep showing some different colors here but but if we're referring to a Lewis base we're thinking in terms of delta G double dagger and if we are referring to a Brownstead base 
we are thinking in terms of just delta G. And, and by the way, let me let me demonstrate delta G for you really fast because I didn't show that. But delta G can be traced by if I if I trace this this line out from where we started to where we finished, because I said we started off at a higher energy level and ended up at a lower energy level, implying that we are working with a negative delta G. Well, well, that's going to be um, you know, uh, that's going to show a relationship between where we started in energy and where we ended up in energy. And, and if we're looking at the Brownstead base, we are referring to, to that energy. So, so Brownstead is going to be referring to the delta G, while the Lewis base is going to be referring to the delta G double dagger, or transition state. So, so now that we've kind of cleared that out of the way, um, let's move forward and show some examples of, of what we're talking about. So let's see here, if I have an example, say, where I have carbon and I can attach it to some hydrogens, make a good leaving group, bromine, and then I interact it with a nucleophile, and my nucleophiles will be drawn with these lone pairs attached to them and, and, a, and a negative charge to imply that I have an ability to, to donate electrons. So, so remember, the difference between a Lewis base and a nucleophile is that um, a nucleophile has the ability to donate a pair of electrons to an atom other than hydrogen. And, and that's what we're going to be demonstrating here when we, when we move forward by, by showing it with this reaction arrow. So the nucleophile comes in and interacts with, with carbon and knocks the bromine off. And by the way, when you're, when you're referring to a nucleophile, you're also um, engaging it with, with what is called an electrophile. And, and this entire molecule right here is going to be known as an electrophile, while this carbon is going to be known as an electrophilic center. So I just want to want to make that point clear as well. But, but basically the nucleophile came in and interacted with this carbon and knocked bromine off. Now in our next step, we can show that our products are now going to look like this. We keep all of our hydrogens. Now we have a nucleophile attached and then we have bromine floating around in solution. The negative charge. And by the way, I, I typically don't draw all of the, uh, the lone pairs that are attached to bromine, but, but that's just a bad habit of mine. And, and if you're already doing that, you know, continue to do so. But, but anyway, I just, uh, I just don't want people to follow my bad habits by not drawing these lone pairs. I just, I just simply indicate um, you know, that we have all of these lone pairs by, by demonstrating a, a negative charge for speed. But, but basically, um, it's good to donate or to, sh to show those uh, those lone pairs because that helps you um, see what's happening with you know as far as electron transfer is concerned. Now, now now that we've talked about the nucleophile interaction, let's demonstrate another example where we have a base interaction. And just like the nucleophile, I'm going to show lone pairs on my base with a negative charge to imply that we have an ability to donate electrons. And I suppose we can interact this with uh, hydrochloric acid and then we can move forward so basically what's going to happen is this is going to come in over here take this hydrogen and knock chlorine off and then on our product side we are going to have a base attached to a hydrogen with chlorine floating around in solution so, so as you can see, in one instance, we, we were working with a nucleophile because it donated a pair of electrons to a carbon. And, a, and then in this instance, we had a base because we donated a pair of electrons to a hydrogen. Now, now keep in mind, when I, when I say that, I, I, I have to be referring to the Lewis base because the Lewis base is the, is the kinetic example that, that was given previously. Now, if I were to talk about the base in terms of it having an affinity for hydrogens, and that it accepted a hydrogen, well now my base um, description would be related thermodynamically and I'd be referring to the Brownstead base. So, so I just want to make that point clear, but you know, I'm just, I'm just writing base and, and that's typically how you're going to, uh, to see these reactions written and demonstrated here in, uh, in your future organic courses and, and sessions that you, that you might be taking. So, so let's demonstrate an example where we have both uh, a nucleophile and a base interacting with the molecule. So, for example, let me just separate this, but if I have an example where, uh, let's just say I have a pi bond, 
and we can just continue to interact it with, uh, we'll say, hydrochloric acid. And then we move forward. Well, if I show arrow pushing, I'm going to have a, an attack from this pi bond. And keep in mind, whenever you see a pi bond, um, just know that pi bonds have a built-in pair of electrons inside of them, and that's how they have the uh, ability to, to donate electrons as well. So, so I want to make that point. But basically, then chlorine will get knocked off, and then in my next step, I will have something like this, where I have now three hydrogens because my pi bond broke and I accepted a hydrogen. I'll have a carbocation right here, and this is going to be a secondary carbocation. It, it's not going to be as stable as a tertiary, but, but it's going to be relatively stable. And, and, and then here I have a, a chlorine still floating around in solution with a negative charge. So now this is going to interact with the carbocation. And then my product is going to be represented with something like this, where Now I have my, my hydrogen still on here. And then I can demonstrate a hydrogen right here. Remember, because remember before I, I, I always had this hydrogen, it was just Im simply implied. And then I added chlorine. And by the way, some, nothing's here, but but that's that indicates that I'm that I have a methyl group right here as well. So so I just want to demonstrate that for clarity. But basically what happened was if I go back into my you know uh, nucleophile and base explanations, um, what you can see is that this right here donated a pair of electrons to a hydrogen. So in this instance, we were working with a base. And then over in the second step, we had chlorine interacting with the carbocation. So chlorine served as a nucleophile. And this carbocation served as an electrophilic center. But basically, we were working with both. We were working with a base and a nucleophile. And keep in mind, once again, I'm just referring to it as a base. But if you were to ask me to explain what type of base, well, well then I would you know, either give you the thermodynamic explanation um, related to the Brownstead definition, or I'd give you a kinetic uh, explanation related to the Lewis definition. So, so I hope that was helpful, and uh, I will continue. You know, we will continue making a, a couple more videos here on this uh, um, nucleophile versus base um, explanation, and and hopefully we can we can clear up some more misconceptions that that are um, that are that seem to be prevalent.